Hey guys, XR UK today, live streaming the uh, Samba, the march from Buckingham Palace, protesting for our government to address the climate and ecological emergency more immediately in support of the new CEE bill, which would close up some of the loopholes that our government uses, such as the emissions trading and uh, yeah, and all that sort of thing, and dumping, and it would ob obligate them to to act more immediately to help preserve the environment and the ecosystems that we are surrounded by and live in. Behind me right now, the march we've got the samba doing what they do best. We've got a great "We Want to Live" sign standing up right here, and behind processions of people holding flags. All in support of anti-oppression and anti-climate change. So much energy. We're just outside of... Wellington Barracks, just down the road from Buckingham Palace, on our way to Parliament Square, where we will meet with the three other marches going on in London right now, all causing mass civil disobedience in the name of climate change. Why are you uh, here today? We're here today because the government needs to act on climate change now. Totally agree. Are you in support of the new CEE bill? Sorry? Are you in support of the new CEE bill? Yes. Great, mate. Why are you here today? Because we want the government to take action on the climate emergency. Yes. Are you... Uh, uh, in support of citizens' assemblies? Yes, of course! Woo! Brilliant, so that's it. I think that's everyone. Day one of the rebellion. Huh? Day one of the rebellion. Yeah. Day one of the rebellion. As you can see, the turnout is insane. So much energy, so much solidarity. We are now approaching about halfway down the road towards Parliament Square. I'm feeling very, very, very uh, enthusiastic about what will happen in the square today. 
so many different groups, so many different actions going on, so many speakers giving their, giving their two pence on why we need to act so urgently on the climate emergency. Uh, The march has slowed down dramatically. Should we uh, go in and investigate? Should we have a little look? So this is just one of four marches happening simultaneously today, all heading towards Parliament Square. Manchester and London. Oh, look over here. What have we got here? This is our Amazon. Stop HS2 group. Uh, well, I've come down today to stand with all the people that you see around you to try and get the government to essentially support the CEE bill in order to actually look after the planet. What group is this? What, what uh, South East group is this? This is specifically to do with HS2, the largest infrastructure project uh, in the country ever. It's going to cost over at least 107 billion by the time it's finished. Uh, it is going to destroy over 106 ancient woodlands. It's not going to be carbon neutral for at least 125 years. Uh, it's going to encourage airport expansion rather than stopping it, and no one wants it. It's destroying the planet. And to all the people that are saying that it's uh, too far gone into the process, and it's already started now, and, uh, and oh, sorry, we should go. Sorry. So good. Uh, but yeah, I was going to say, um, to all the people that um, say that it's too far, too far down the construction process, and that the, um, the, the railway has already like, been made, and it's, there's like, no going back now, what do you say to them? Well, first of all, it's not been made. They've actually done very little. All they've really done so far is what they're calling preparatory works, which basically means chopping down a bunch of trees. There's not a lot else going on. But more importantly, it's never too late. That would suggest that everything we're doing here is ridiculous because, you know, there's never a point where it's too late to stop. You have to stop this train. It's utterly ridiculous. It doesn't matter how much you spend on it now. The cost to the environment and to the people of Britain is always going to be higher than that. Thanks. So... Just more lies from the government, really. As always. Business as usual, as far as they're concerned. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Thank you, mate. No worries Thank at you. all. Thank you. Just say we're on the way to the bottom now. Or... Yeah. Just, just making our way down the procession towards the quieter, the quieter actions. <laughs> we have passed the samba. <laughs> oh. Hi. Shall I ask one of the older people why they want to, why they're here today? Actually? Okay, the stronger 
and putting our hands in the lives, our lives in the hands of government and they're not doing anything. They're not acting fast enough. We're not getting anywhere. Um, and I felt like it was time to actually come to out and get on the street and be part of the change and demand what needs to happen because it's too slow. We're, we don't have enough time to wait around for the government to, you know, spend years in consultation. We need action and we need it now. We're being sent lots of love from here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, sorry. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Tell us where you've come down here today. Where are you? We cycled here from Brighton over four days. We visited Horse Hill. Horse Hill unconventional drilling site where there's a protest camp. We stopped off in Guildford to visit some rebels. We got hosted by Extinction Rebellion people. And last night we stayed at the HS2 protest camp in Denham Country Park. Um, so it's been a great bonding experience and visiting some frontline fossil fuel fights and fight for the climate, biodiversity loss, staying in some beautiful places, beautiful woods that are under threat. So we're really happy to be here and it's a gorgeous day. Cheers. Being said lots of love on here. <laughs> Lots of different age groups are protesting today, young, old, lots of different backgrounds. Um, and so far we've heard a lot of young perspectives and so now I'm going to go and get a nice uh, older perspective, a more mature perspective on the climate and ecological emergency. Hi guys, me again. Hi Sarah. Oh, hi. So please tell me, why are you here today? What, are you, what, what is your interest in the Extinction Rebellion movement and, and why are you holding the sign? Um, well, I've been involved since last April, since rebellion last April, and um, well before that actually, from the, the bridges occupation. And I, it's the thing that I feel the most strongly about, and have done for about the last 15 years. So when Extinction Rebellion came up, uh, I just thought that's fantastic. This is what we need. We need to be. It ticks all the boxes. Yeah. It, yeah. In terms of some civil disobedience but also mainly just raising awareness putting it up the agenda making people aware that we've got one planet to live on we've got finite resources we're all connected to the earth that we need to you know respect the soil respect the trees respect the rivers and see them as part of us rather than as something that we just use to exploit and enrich ourselves yeah it's ridiculous i was reading the other day or uh, on one of our briefing documents that uh, we've lost about 50% of the uh, topsoil in East Anglia alone. Yeah, and like, I, I don't really want to know what the rest I mean, of the world is. It's probably even worse. Topsoil is really scary. They're saying we've only got a certain, you know, like 25 to 40 years of harvest left in our soil because we deplete it all the time, by the way. Sorry, we so we've got a lot of bikes put pesticides on it. And, so, you know, it's, it's part of our, it's not just about carbon emissions. It's part of how we think about our water, our, our forests, our soil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And respecting it in the way that we just don't do at the moment, really. Uh, this is why I, I'm so in, in favour of this new CE bill, because basically it, it, would, it would make sure the 
government is like obligated to sort of you know ensure carbon sorry ensure that there's uh, like natural carbon sinks and um, you know it would stop it would stop so much soil degradation especially you know here in the UK and um, on top of that it would probably well like, hopefully it would um, make our government more responsible with how they treat foreign soils like in, yeah. in less you know developed countries like yeah. Africa and stuff like yeah, that where because that whole thing of kind of outsourcing your carbon saying oh we're all right but actually everything that we consume has been made in China and so we blame those, those carbon emissions on China rather than take responsibility for them. Yeah, exactly. Themselves. Yeah, exactly. And, and um, yeah. Oh, it's been really good speaking to you anyway. Okay. Thanks. Enjoy Thank today. You. See you guys. I'm just going to head towards the end of the march. So you see all these wonderful rebels out here. I think there's some people that will talk to us back here if we can spot them. I think they're right back with the banner at the back here. Hi, so this, these are rebels from Oxford. Can you tell me why you've come down here today? Sorry, say that again? Hi. Should I take my mask off? I was saying... Uh, why, why have you come down here today? Why are you protesting? Because it's the right thing to do. We need to get the government to listen. We need to get the climate bill talked about and through. Yeah, the government has responded completely inadequately to COVID crisis. They're responding completely inadequately to the environmental crisis. Um, and we need to let them know we're yeah, here to get them to respond better. That's perfect. That's exactly, that's exactly why I'm here as well. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hello. T tell us why you've come. Why, why did you join Extinction Rebellion? I joined Extinction Rebellion because we need to take our foot off the accelerator of global warming and uh, put it on the brake and start rewilding, reinvesting and repairing um, our beautiful natural world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here for the whole week. Um, I'm excited. I'm nervous. Um, I'm so thrilled to see lots of people I know and loads and loads of new people that I don't know. And I'm feeling like a huge amount of energy from the flags and the samba bands and all the like amazing people that I've already met. And it's a wonderful reminder of how awesome Extinction Rebellion is. I was just going to ask, um, a lot of newspapers have been saying that Extinction Rebellion's lost its momentum and they were never going to have that much support in these, uh, in these you know, coming you know, um, protests. They, they were saying that Extinction Rebellion last year was just a bit of a fad and yeah. people were not going to do it. But, yeah. you know, to those people, what do you say today, you know, with just this march alone, having all yeah, these people yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. Um, I say that, um, I mean, first I just don't think it's true. Like, I think that concern about climate and ecological breakdown has actually gone up during coronavirus because people have a chance to reconnect to nature and also see how everything is connected on the planet. And so pandemic is related to how we, how we live on this world and uh, the resources that we use and so I just don't think I just don't think it's true that it and it certainly hasn't gone away as an issue so Extinction Rebellion isn't going to go away so I mean while we're still not taking enough action on it we're not going to we're not going to go and that energy is not going to that energy is not going to disappear you can't you know squash that's the thing about energy you can't yeah, get rid of it it goes exactly. somewhere it goes somewhere and so even if it's not XR or whatever it, we've connected a ton of people who really want to take action and really care about this and we've also woken up the you know, rest of the world to be like, we need to act on this. And only more and more and more people are going to see that and join in. Yeah. And, you know, some people take a break, some people come back in. But it's, it's always going to be there. Well, there's different levels of engagement, right? But, I mean, as long as people are engaging, even if it's digitally, then that's still support, you know? Yeah, and, absolutely. You know, and I can't blame some people. You know, COVID right now makes oh, it so course. scary. And yeah, so... Yeah, yeah. Of course, some people, you know, some people can't join because they haven't got the like able-bodied or they're too worried about COVID. Rightly so. So, but the people who want to be here are here, and own and, and seeing it again happening, I think it's only going to attract more and more and more people. Totally, totally. Great, solid Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, um, sorry. Hi. Hi. So why why are you here today? Um, since lockdown, I've been very frustrated with it all. Um, I've been feeling that like we can have, we still have this massive crisis going on. Like COVID has obviously been huge for everyone, and I don't want to take that away. But 
the feeling that we can only focus on one thing at a time is really scary. Um, and I wanted to come here today to just kind of reconnect with it and like engage a bit more with the public as well to say like the climate crisis is still going on. Yeah, and I, I have to say, I think you're completely right. I was just talking to one of your friends earlier, yeah. and she said, like, this isn't one issue, this is a compound of issues, yeah. you know, it's just a wicked issue, you know, so many different things going on. You know, you abuse the environment, it means that you're, you're really damaging the lives of people who are really disadvantaged, yeah. not just Believe in foreign it. places, but here yeah. in the UK. Yeah. Air pollution alone, it's killing so many people. Yeah, yeah. Really. and also, like, I, be, I know that in uh, with local actions and stuff, I'm from Oxford, we've been, like, it's been kind of people, some people have been trying to like organize protests at the same time as a be uh, like black lives matter oh, movement. but it's like actually it's all intertwined like the black lives matter movement is so important and like climate justice and social justice are completely intertwined yeah like you're not gonna have one without the other yeah yeah we yeah. need to go and catch up with the march oh, okay. <laughs> nice talk to you. Bye. yes bye thank you Okay, we're going to dash, so excuse the wobbly footage, but we're trying to get to the front of the march again. So we're there as they join Parliament Square. I was going to say, sorry, you're a champion for doing it with this bagger, honestly. <laughs> We want to live. small to make a difference. Hey! <laughs> okay. Dashing to the front. Ooh. I'm trying not to get caught up in the bike lane. Unfuck the system. Huge banner. Hi, do you want to tell us? you've come down here today? We've come down here today to try and persuade the government to take action on climate change. We want the bill on the climate and ecological emergency to be passed in Parliament to compel the government to act because it's urgent. We are losing the planet. We have to save our planet. We don't have another one. There is no planet B. Please, please, Boris Johnson and the rest of the government, listen to what we're saying today. Coronavirus is nothing compared to what will happen if you don't stop the climate emergency. Thank you very much. See you later. Very few police here today. It's all really calm and peaceful. High energy. Colourful smoke going off at the beginning of the march. There's a real sense of excitement here.
We are in Parliament Square right now. Such an atmosphere. So much energy, so many protesters. So much sound. If the government can't hear us now, I don't think they ever will. Come around here. So right behind us, the march from Buckingham Palace has convened at the edges of Parliament Square. The Samba Band have resumed the music performance. Everyone is dancing. They're all holding their signs and all their groups are preparing for speeches and everything in the next half an hour to an hour or so. I've been having a, a lot of interesting discussions with people about about um, the social contracts and uh, and how it's the government's you know responsibility to look after us and uh, if anything this shows that people really really feel that they aren't doing their job people need to switch back to yeah yeah a more plant-based lifestyle you know and as well that that is so true All right, uh, hi, nice to see you. So we're in, um, it's brilliant actually, so we're in Parliament Square, as you can see, uh, Big Ben in the background. Uh, what is really encouraging is that there's a huge amount of people who, huge amount of people who came down um, from Trafalgar Square, and uh, they occupied Parliament Square about half an hour ago, and then they had an assembly, and they went, right, we don't want to just be on the square, so they actually pushed out onto the roads, they went all the way around the roads, um, and now, uh, what's even more encouraging, I thought there's a lot of people already, uh, there's a whole lot more people just coming from behind us, um, and uh, that's the group that I think started off in Buckingham Palace, right, okay. So there's a hell of a lot of people there as well, and there's a whole load that are also coming from the west as well, right, so it's really encouraging. Um, I've literally just taken my mask off, but people are keeping their distance, they're all wearing masks, I've been really sensible about that. It's been fascinating to watch um, social media. There's a really strange backlash against Extinction Rebellion. So let's just make it clear right here, right? This is people from all walks of life. Absolutely all walks of life. The only thing that we've got in common is we've seen the science. We're terrified. We know that the governments aren't dealing with it. We know we have to act now. We know we have to get the government and the media to tell the truth. That's, that's the common thing that we've got. Apart from that, we are all backgrounds, all ages, all races, all professions. I've just been talking to a retired police superintendent. You're being asked to put your mask on. He's just putting his mask on. Good point. And great to see that people are being sticking 
filling all the petrol stations. Oh, police are moving. I'm just going to make sure I'm on the protesters. Oh, I think they're just gathering. March from Buckingham Palace has made it to Parliament Square. It's also the first day of Parliament coming back after the summer recess. So hopefully our presence here today will bring certain ecological fact matters that may have slipped the back of the minds of politicians to the fore of their minds. And as you can see, there's, a, there's an absolutely fantastic turnout here today. Given that we're coming out of COVID, there were some reservations about the turnout, but it's absolutely fantastic and everyone is wearing a mask and observing social distancing. As you can see, the turnout behind me is absolutely phenomenal. Also today, the, uh, the Green Party will be putting forward the CEE -E bill more about that later and we have people from all over the country all different backgrounds old young different ethnicities it's a real coming together of people here today last year's extinction rebellion was quoted as being the largest act of civil disobedience that this country has ever seen I prefer to call it an act of obedience to a higher truth. Thank you. Thank you. Should we get away from the sand there for, so Do you want to do another run a bit away from the sand? Keep the mask on. Keep the mask on. Is that okay? Oh great. Thank you. I've got an interview. Yeah, sure. So, um, so we've just had uh, another large uh, sort of column of people to join us. So they're they're insisting on filling all the street around Parliament Square rather than obediently being on Parliament Square. And uh, I've been talking to a whole load of the people who are new here, and it really is all kinds of backgrounds. That's the point to make. I've just been talking to a retired superintendent. Okay, so he's a retired police superintendent working with, with Extinction Rebellion because he is absolutely terrified of the breakdown in law and order that is inevitable if we do nothing about climate change. It's really important that people realise people with really re uh, reputational professions are coming out because they realise if we don't do something now, they're terrified. Just been talking to an air pilot, a retired air pilot. This gentleman, he has seen the outbreak of extreme uh, weather conditions over his career and he's terrified he's he's got his own story about the experience of climate change and he's taking he's ready to get arrested for the same reason there's a scientist just to my side here now he's got written on his chest science prof just ask me about the evidence do you want to say something about that sir sure I guess the real problem is that it's actually worse when I read the science evidence it's much worse than even the politicians are willing to accept so that's why we have to act now and you know, time is pretty short, so the main thing I'm out here for today is to uh, have a citizen's assembly is the right time to be doing that now. That's the really, this is the timely moment to push that forward. So you have, even have organizations like National Farming Union, which are really behind doing something like this. They see the effects on the land in Britain, so it's not just overseas that we have these problems. It's in the UK, and it's also trying to connect to the rest of the country. People who are not here today, but want to stand with us but come from very different communities. And it's those people we also have to represent and try and bring them into the conversation. That's really what a Citizens' Assembly is about, trying to share that conversation and realize what the evidence is telling us that we have to actually do for our own country. Thank you very much. Thank you.
I found like a, a lady who is dressed as Mother Nature. Can I talk to her? Sounds good, sounds good. See you! So we're now in Parliament Square. We've come to I'm the Statue nature. of Taking Liberties. And for those who um, haven't been able to make it here today, um, there is a digital rebellion going online as well. So um, check out rebellion.earth and see what you can do online. Everyone can get involved in whatever way they can. Cool, so hi Mother Nature. What are you doing here today? Well, I'm here because of trying to get the, um, uh, the climate... Sorry, they can move. They can, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. yeah, just keep the mask up. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it up. Oh, sorry, we need the masks on. You can just hold it there, it's fine. So where are we now? So, yeah, we're in Parliament Square. We've been talking to a lot of scientists about this climate emergency, and now we're going to hear from Mother Nature once she gets her mask on. emergency bill through and try and get a national citizens assembly because we've got floods and wildfires and bleak harvests and global heating and we and don't to... forget fire tornadoes exactly and also we need to get our MPs and governments on board to get this bill through fast to protect life on the planet I'm also dressed here as a statue of taking liberties because Donald Trump is a climate change denier and hopefully he will not get re-elected. Also, we have this wonderful oasis of life on planet Earth and let us try and keep it as good as we possibly can for human beings and all life we share the planet with. So if you could say one thing to Donald Trump then, the climate change denier, what would you say to him right now? Well, to listen to the scientists, that's the thing, you know, the climate scientists and understand what they're saying, you know, David Attenborough is very respected, um, so this is what he needs to do, because otherwise he's just, you know, taking us further down the route, route of more carbon footprint, and, uh, he's, he's, you know, he's just got to stop. Totally agree. Thank totally you Thanks so much. Right. Okay, just going to walk around, we have a quick look around, Hold see on. what's going on here. So people have done their marches and they've all gathered in Parliament Square. Oh, do you want to find someone from the Animal Rebellion? That would be fantastic to get on here. Animal Rebellion? Yeah. So thanks for watching everybody. Parliament Square with hundreds and hundreds, thousands of protesters here. Okay, and we're just going to head round the square to give you a sense of the scale. Parliament Square. Lots of rebels that have come from the marches from four different points in London. Um, Can you describe what's going on now? The, uh, the various marches from around London are now arriving at Parliament Square um, to give the incoming politicians a warm welcome back. Today is the first day after the summer recess, so hopefully this will send a message to politicians about what's important to their constituents. And the turnout here is certainly evidence of what is important to their constituents. For any watching politicians that wish to express their, their gratitude for our presence, please send in messages to our Facebook and I shall be sure to share them with viewers. It's, uh, it's actually absolutely overwhelming 
the number of people that have taken time out of their lives to attend here today. It's absolutely mind-blowing. And we've got all different ages, young, old, children. There was a lady that I saw, an elderly lady that could barely walk and she made the effort to come down here today. It, it's a, it's, this Extinction Rebellion is a real movement that brings people together from all different backgrounds. I think it's, uh, it's time that we spoke to somebody possibly more interesting than myself. We shall find someone. Is that right, Zoe? That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Who are we going to find to talk to? Okay, we'll have a look around. Oh, it looks like there's people on the march over there. I think that must be one of the other marches. We're heading over there. Oh, and there's more smoke as they arrive in, in Parliament Square. So this is day one of the rebellion. This rebellion is going to go on all through this week and into the next week. People picnicking. And I'm just going to go and see this other march arriving here. Sounds like they've got another fantastic samba band going too. To say a few words about this do you want to say a few words about this bill that's being proposed today right okay so we are here to we are here to we are here to back the uh, climate and ecological bill um emergency bill because um this bill is uh, very important for three reasons the first one is because it's going to be truly taking into account the carbon footprint of the of the UK and it's going to place the ecology at the same at the same place as the uh, as, as the uh, sorry as the climate uh, because they are the two sides of the same coins really so it's really important to consider the ecology uh, and it's also big, important because the decision should be driven by a citizen assembly uh, a citizen assembly that will advise the secretary of state and that will advise the member of parliament so um, is that okay thank you very much for that i think that was uh, most eloquently put
everybody and we'll be back live um, later this afternoon. There's a V-Mix which is a mix between live streams happening all over the country taking place at um, 2pm today on Facebook UK, also on Extinction Rebellion YouTube. So tune into that and see you later. Thanks for watching.